Aptera Motors, you know the car I'm talking about, the three-wheeled solar panel hyper-efficient car, or as the federal government calls it, an auto cycle. Point being, Aptera has been here for quite some time. Founded in the mid-2000s, then was dissolved in 2011, revived by the co-founders in 2019, blah, 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 blah. Here we are today, it is 2025, and we still don't have a production vehicle. Point being, I thought today would be a perfect time to talk about the past, the present, and the future and history of Aptera to see where Aptera is. Give you guys an update about what Aptera is doing and so we can all be up to date about Aptera Motors. As I've said, Aptera was founded in the mid 2000s with the same form factor auto cycle that we see today. It did not have solar panels, but it was still the same hyper-efficient design, and that's what sold people on this vehicle, a very efficient electric vehicle that can take you from A to B in the most cost-effective, cheap, energy-efficient way possible. Uh, they had some issues with regulations determining on whether the car was car was considered a full car or a motorcycle, which hindered production. They're also having funding issues, and we'll get into that a bit later. Eventually, the company went bust in 2011, but then it came back. Same form factor, same Aptera vehicle that you pretty much see today, except now it has solar panels and it is much more production intent, less prototype concepty, really a real vehicle. And it was brought back in 2019 by the co-founders, Chris Anthony and Steve Fambra, which you've probably seen their faces before with a focus on the solar panel side of their business. A bit of a side note, but it seems Aptera is really trying to sell on and scale the solar panel side of their business. So selling and marketing their proprietary solar panels to other auto manufacturers, other businesses, and that could honestly be a big part of their business, but this is out of spec bits. We talk about cars, so we're focused on cars. But the company exists as it is today in Carlsbad, California in their 77,000 square foot facility. Okay. Big, not as big as some of the manufacturing facilities we have from the likes of Tesla and Ford and Rivian, millions and millions of square feet. But Aptera says that they could produce 20,000 Aptera vehicles in the 77,000 square foot via, uh, facility. And I honestly think that they will be able to do it. Now, the Aptera is technically classified as a motorcycle under the subsection of auto cycle, which means you don't need a helmet like a traditional motorcycle. You don't have as persistent crash tests, but Aptera is doing all of their own crash tests to ensure that safety is up to the standard that we see all other automakers, and there's an easier regulatory path. Again, this is not a huge passenger vehicle, and so it's a lot easier to sell this product, to get from concept to production. But just because it's easier in the terms of regulation doesn't mean that Aptera isn't going through all of the business woes of trying to produce a product, trying to produce a vehicle. Now, this vehicle was built around huge ultra efficiency, okay? They have a 1,000 mile range version of this vehicle that they're looking to produce, okay? Drag coefficient of just 0.13. A Tesla Model S's drag coefficient is 0 0.20, okay, for comparison. So this thing is super, super efficient. This would be one of the lowest of any road vehicle ever produced, period. Like many other startups, Aptera is building so much of the vehicle in-house, like the solar panels, like the motors, like the infotainment, the ECU, the BMS, all of this designed in-house by them to allow them to fully control the end-to-end -end experience. But they will also have some off-the-shelf parts, which I imagine will help ease production very simply and also allow it to be easier for customers to get parts elsewhere needed be. Now, it is worth mentioning that Aptera has a huge focus on the right to repair. The ability for Aptera owners to get their vehicle and be able to repair it 
themselves, okay? Get the parts directly from the auto manufacturer. We know many auto manufacturers today forbid their customers from getting the parts from the auto manufacturer to fix their own vehicles because they're afraid of the customer avoiding the warranty or doing something wrong, and then also just trying to upsell us in the future. Aptera doesn't wanna do that. They wanna make things easy for the owner, for the customer to be able to fix and do themselves, which I absolutely love. So, Aptera, at this point seems to have a full idea of what they need to produce a vehicle with their most recent Artemis vehicle, which we'll talk about more in detail in a second. They have everything down from their motors to the batteries, to the solar panels, to the composite body shell of the vehicle, who's producing it, where it's going to be produced. And so Aptera has an idea of how this vehicle is going to get made. I guess what we're waiting for is when. When is it going to be made? Now, I think where Aptera is falling short and why we're not seeing it be produced as quickly as it should be today is funding. Aptera in total has received more than $130 million, which may sound like a lot of money, but when you're making a vehicle, we're talking bees, okay? We're talking big bucks, billions of dollars, and that's how much capital you really need to bring a product to market, a vehicle to market, all of the components, the suppliers that you have. Now for something the size of an Aptera being built in their 77,000 square foot facility, they probably don't need billions. But the point is they need a lot of money. And my guess is maybe, just maybe, they're having trouble finding sourcing contracts with suppliers, as well as just getting capital in general. Not to mention, many of their suppliers are not American, they're Italian or French or Korean. And so that alone, with the huge tariff situation that we have going on right now, with the changes and the $7,500 tax credit, there's a lot happening in the financial space around producing an electric vehicle. And it could be the case that this is also hurting them as well. Look, as I've mentioned, you need a lot of money to produce a vehicle. And if Aptera doesn't get that money, and they already have some money now, they're just going to continue to burn the money that they currently have without getting any more money. Eventually they're going to run out of cash and the company will go bust, which I absolutely do not want to happen. I think what Aptera has built is magnificent and I want to see this vehicle go into production. It is as simple as that. In the past, the first iteration of Aptera, EVs weren't as mainstream, you know, vehicles were getting bigger and bigger. The market for a three-wheeled vehicle like this probably wouldn't as been as big as probably it is today. Battery technology, motor technology, suppliers are into electrification more. So much has progressed in the past 10, 15, 20 years. That means Aptera could do a lot more today and be more viable today than how they were, you know, 20 years ago. Now, enough with the past and the finances and history of Aptera. Let's talk about the present. Aptera has had a few iterations of their Aptera vehicle. They had Gamma, Delta, all sorts of different testing beta names. Then they had their CES prototype. And now we have Artemis. And Artemis is Aptera's first full validation vehicle with production intent hardware and software. Again, worth mentioning, Aptera is building their software in-house, which is very good to see. And their software, I think, looks pretty intuitive. Of course, we'll have to see it in person, test in person to see how it is in the real world. But they have the hardware proof of a vehicle, a working vehicle with working customer intent software, which is very good to hear. They have chassis, body panels, lighting systems, working solar panels, battery frames, wiring harnesses, point of use controllers, ECUs, infotainment, lighting, windows and locks that are working, the vision system for ADAS. I mean, so much has gone into this vehicle and this is the most production intent vehicle that they have had 
yet. Uh, as I mentioned, right, functional UI, the previous CES version had a static UI. This is fully usable, being able to change things like the lights and see your cameras and just your basic infotainment, music, drive modes. A complete thermal system, active battery cooling and a working AC. Aptera has built a vehicle that it works. They have working side and rear view cameras, as I've mentioned, right, their vision autonomous system, display brightness for adjustable night driving, uh, full working blind spot elimination and backup camera, firmware for the entire hardware of the vehicle, and saying that this vehicle would even support over the air updates. Uh, nuts. Look, this is the closest Aptera has gotten to a full production vehicle, a vehicle that can be sold to the masses, which is great to hear. For so long, we've seen them working on prototypes, prototypes, prototypes. Mm -hmm. More production intent than the last, but something that proves that they have a fully working vehicle that could be handed to someone, proves that they have suppliers, all of their most, if not all of their suppliers, they have the software, they know what hardware they need. This is just an important milestone for them. Aptera is even going on a road tour with this vehicle, the California Solar Road Trip Tour, all through California, going through stops for people to not only see the vehicle, but have a full experience of what road tripping the vehicle is like. Now there'll be one vehicle up from this, which will be Gemini, and that will be the full production weight chassis vehicle where they can do some final road testing for the vehicle with its full production intent weight and design and all of its set in stone features, a fully truly production intent vehicle. And this vehicle will have a full fit and finish. And so the closest to production as Aptera will get until a final production vehicle is made. So things are looking up, but again, when are we actually going to see these vehicles on the road? And that is what is unclear. And that's where real EV startup woes really start to set into place and creep into my mind and make me wonder, is Aptera really going to make it? Look, Aptera is going to go through the same EV or just auto manufacturing startup woes that every other automaker is going to go through. Service, reliability, small recalls, production issues. It's stuff that is going to happen. It is inevitable. And I wonder if Aptera is really going to be able to get through all of that. May I remind you, we've had companies similar to Aptera, not really too similar, but the format of a small efficient vehicle, Arcimoto and Electromechanica, both no longer exist for a reason, part being that it was hard to sell a small form factor vehicle like this to the masses. Now, Aptera's vehicle is a little bigger, it's more efficient, it has more cargo space, it seems more car-y. But I wonder if a vehicle like this is going to be received well with most consumers. Now, Aptera has a diehard fan base, and I can already see the comments filled with hate and about how I don't know what I'm talking about, and maybe I don't. But what I do know about is all startups have pretty similar issues, and Aptera is going to go through them, and we've seen similar stories in the past. Is Aptera going to be able to go through all of that? Now, compared to Electromechanica and Arcimoto, Aptera's vehicle is more efficient. It's got solar panels, right, to extend the range, pretty much free charging from the sun. All right, more functionality. You got two seats instead of one. You have more cargo capacity. It seems like a vehicle that can actually be used for the fullest. I think the vehicle looks a bit better than what Arcimoto and Electromechanica were selling. They're having their own in-house vertical integrated systems and software, which we know is important when it comes to producing a vehicle, particularly an EV where things are changing so much. They have a really enthusiastic fan base, over 40,000 reservations and counting, probably more at this point. And so clearly people are interested. I'm interested, all right? But when you look at other startups, when you look at 
Aptera's past and their present, it's hard to ignore the obvious. You get through all of that, and then at the end of the day, you start making money, and then you have to make sure that you're making a profit. There's a lot that goes into these companies. And look, it's good that Aptera isn't jumping the gun. Let's say maybe if they started production too soon, like now, things just wouldn't work out. And so they're trying to play their cards right. And so I will give them that benefit of the doubt. With that being said, we can't keep waiting for this vehicle. It can't be a continuing, it can't forever be the next year, next year, next year, within the year, end of the year. At some point, we got to actually see this vehicle in the flesh, in customers' hands, in people's driveways, on the roads. And I think that's when I'll start to have a little more trust into what Aptera is doing. But I'll say this, Aptera is one of the most transparent startups we've seen. They give monthly updates, all sorts of videos and information into the ins and outs of the company and the vehicle to have and help everyone, enthusiasts, investors, those just passing by, have an idea of what Aptera is doing. And that's important. And I'm glad Aptera is doing that. With that said, I hope Aptera the absolute best. They are as close as to production as possible. They've had some problems in the past. They're slowly trying to make their way to production. And I think all of this is just due to some financial issues. But I think if they can get this vehicle to market, they will sell every single one that they can make. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. This is Out of Spec Bits, and I'll see you guys in the next one.